Top 5 Worst Rated Land Rovers Reliability and Land Rover did not go together for a very long time. Due to issues with the brand's build quality, electrical systems and mechanics. However, the brand is never known for its dependability and instead stands for adventure, off-road toughness and luxury. Having said that, one needs a reliable, well-built four-wheel drive if they want to travel to isolated areas with confidence. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So for today's video, let's take a look at the top five worst rated Land Rovers. But before we get into the video, I have a disclaimer. I'm not spewing nonsense or hating the brand. The cars I'm gonna mention have been tested by a bunch of people out there and they all had the same thing to say. The reputation of Land Rover's 2018 and 2019 Discovery has been tarnished by customer complaints regarding infotainment issues, transmission issues and interior water leaks, while many reliability issues with the Land Rover Discovery 3 and 4 are caused by problems with the air suspension, the electronic parking brake and the dreaded crankshaft seizure. Now the question is, what led Land Rover? to have such a horrible reputation, and what is a modern Land Rover's reliability like? In addition to that, have build quality and reliability improved over time? Watch the video until the end to find out. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's get into the video. At number five, I have the Land Rover Discovery Sport priced at approximately $37,795. The Discovery Sport's interior is good, but it doesn't quite match the appeal of other Land Rovers. It's modern and well equipped, but unlike the top tier Range Rover, the interior isn't a work of art. A 10 speaker audio system, three USB connections and an eight inch touchscreen are just a few of the additional features it offers. It also has two four cylinder turbocharged engines that provide a quiet, comfortable ride. The enhanced engine has 286 horsepower, compared to the base engine's 237 horsepower. Unfortunately, the Disco Sport handles poorly and has below average fuel efficiency. The transmission, which occasionally has ill-timed shifts, is one factor. The infotainment system is also not very user-friendly, and the touchscreen needs future improvements. According to Consumer Reports, the Discovery Sport's uneven power delivery makes it challenging to drive smoothly. Even after having the word Sport in its name, it also has a stiff ride and isn't particularly agile. It has a noisy four-cylinder engine mated to a nine-speed automatic transmission with inept programming, according to Consumer Reports. Despite the fact that it lacks a low-range gearbox, it does offer some limited off-road capabilities. It has a towing capacity of 4,410 pounds. To be honest, many of the problems with previous models' build quality have been well documented, and forums offer a plethora of details. Most Series 1 and 2 Landy, Discovery 1 and 2, Defender and Freelander owners are rather hands-on DIY types who can perform simple repairs and changes to older Landys over the course of a weekend with the aid of a DIY guide. Next up at number four, I have the Land Rover Range Rover Velar, priced at $49,900. The Velar is the newest model in the Land Rover series, but it also embodies Range Rover style in the purest, most dramatic way, both inside and out. As one of the few automakers to effectively use dual touch screen, Land Rover has the cutting edge Touch Pro Duo infotainment system. The Velar offers a lot of cargo space, despite not having a V8 engine and having poor visibility. Additionally, it offers a smooth, quiet ride and it has excellent fuel efficiency for its size. The supercharged P380 variant may be the most appealing if you are interested in driving performance but because of its standard adjustable air suspension, it lacks dialed-in off-road capability. A consumer review online says, massive vibration on braking, the tailgate was jammed and wouldn't open, and the infotainment system crashed on the first of numerous occasions, and this still happens with monotonous regularity. That said, moving on to number three, the Land Rover Range Rover Evoque, 
priced at $41,800. The Range Rover Evoque boasts excellent handling, braking and agility. However, Consumer Report claims that it has a rough and bumpy ride and that its acceleration isn't all that quick. The stop-start system is slow and the turbocharged engine takes a while to accelerate. It has some off-road driving capabilities. Additionally, it has a 3,698 pound towing capacity. According to Consumer Reports, it is tastefully designed and has comfy front seats. It can be hard to see out the back. Despite having two available screens, the infotainment system is complex, slow reacting, and exceedingly distracting, according to Consumer Reports. It has front collision mitigation, automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, lane departure mitigation, and lane keeping assistance as standard features. There is also a blind spot warning feature. The 2021 Land Rover Range Rover Velar, which scored a little better than the Land Rover Discovery Sport and Land Rover Range Rover Evoque, is an option for buyers searching for a compact size Land Rover. Although a customer review says, terrible, terrible, terrible car, the electrics are a constant problem. Headlights keep going out, door locks fail, parking sensors gone, and just had the motherboard rewired for £500, only for all of the faults to show up again a month later. Also, the interior light comes on, on its own. Wish I had never bought this car. Electrics in this motor are a travesty. Moving on at number two, I'm gonna talk about the Land Rover Range Rover Sport Priced at $66,750. The ultimate fusion of exhilarating on-road performance and tough off-road capability is found in the Range Rover Sport. The Sport offers a strong selection of engines, ranging from a supercharged V6 with 340 horsepower up to a supercharged V8 with 575 horsepower. The Range Rover Sport's exterior and interior appearance have been slightly revised for 2018. The interior is very nicely constructed with premium materials and comes equipped with features like dual zone climate control, advanced automated emergency braking, leather upholstery, and two 10 inch touchscreens as standard equipment. Naturally, all of that performance has a cost and fuel efficiency suffers as a result. The Range Rover Sport has a small cabin as well, and the available options will raise the cost to that of the more substantial Range Rover. Did you guys know that a user posted a review online saying, great looking car and many good design features, but badly let down by poor reliability, especially in the software and electronics area? Dealers do not have fixes for many issues. My Range Rover Sport has been in the dealer workshop for problem fixes every month over the past four or five months. I would not recommend buying one. And lastly, at number one, I have the Land Rover Range Rover, priced at $87,350. The full-size Range Rover's massive appearance, opulent interior, and exceptional off-road prowess are difficult to match if you have the money. It has a variety of potent engines and an advanced suspension system that enable the enormous vehicle to handle like a much smaller SUV. A supercharged V6 engine with 340 horsepower is the standard engine and can be upgraded to a supercharged V8 engine with 557 horsepower. Although this car costs a lot and has less cargo room than some of its competitors, the large number of standard equipment far surpasses these drawbacks. The Meridian audio system, heated front seats, 19-inch alloy wheels, and plush leather upholstery are all standard features. A review online says, the engine auto stop-start function is abysmal, causing the car to rock like a dumper truck. It's utter garbage for a vehicle of this stature and expense. Recently, a piece of bodywork on the roof suddenly decided to come loose from the car. The electrical and electronic system seem very questionable too. That said, the only thing that comes to mind is if purchasing any of these or any Land Rover at a fair price is worth it. The original ladder frame chassis and fundamental structures of all new Land Rovers are a long cry from what they are now. A workshop mechanic offered his opinion on Land Rover reliability. 
he acknowledges that it is difficult to say, in his perspective. When working in a service centre, you more often see cars in trouble than ones that are running smoothly. Nevertheless, in his judgment, Land Rover reliability is poorer than most, based on his experiences at other garages. A little surprising, given the pricing. At the same time, there are numerous instances of satisfied owners whose Discovery 1 and 2 have logged more than 300,000 primarily trustworthy miles. A lot of these simply constructed cars are used as daily drivers, or even as trade cars before being used off-road on the weekends. The latest models of Land Rovers and Range Rovers are incredibly high-tech and loaded with modern technology. Some of their automobiles still have an imperfect fit and finish. Customers frequently notice infotainment systems and back cameras malfunctioning, while transmission issues are also frequently mentioned. When they are in good functioning order, Land Rovers and Range Rovers are absolutely beautiful cars. That said, this is it for today's video. Thanks for watching and don't forget to consider subscribing.